recipe that I picked up off a brewer's friend and uh, I brewed it last summer I liked it, it it's a light beer uh, and it's got does have some flavor and it's quite sessionable to shoot for about three and a half four percent somewhere in that range so you could definitely sit and drink it uh, I think it lasts me about four days in the keg so <laughs> <laughs> I sessioned the heck out of that beer <laughs> so uh, we're doing a 10 gallon batch today uh, and uh, got some of the club's equipment. We've got the club's kettle and uh, burner and uh, wort chiller. The rest of the stuff is mine. Uh, ingredients, four pounds of Maris Otter, uh, 10 pounds of two row, and two pounds of crystal 60. So you're only going to be doing 16 pounds of grain in a 10 gallon batch. So you can see that's going to be on the light side. Uh, we've got uh, four and a half ounces of Cascade total, uh, half an ounce at 60, two ounces at 20, and two ounces at five. Uh, it's mostly for flavoring, there's not a lot of bittering going on there. Uh, and the yeast we're going to use is uh, a US05, it's a Cephal. American ale yeast, uh, dry yeast. It's a, yeah, it's a, it's a good, uh, well, it's basically 1056. I mean, it's, all right. And then, uh, that's about it. We're actually behind the game here. We're going to get everything rolling and we'll get started. Hi, I'm Steve Spears. I'm the owner of Dunkirk Homebrew. We are a local uh, homebrew shop here in the Dunkirk, Fredonia area, uh, located at 3375 East Main Road, Dunkirk, New York. We are a full line um, supplier of beer and wines, wine brewing equipment and supplies. Come on down. Most of my customers become my friends. Thank you. spout on the bottom, so basically using it as a false bottom. It's a pretty tight fit, but I just made sure to leave a little bit of room there. And uh, I just got an old uh, spigot that I found out in the garage. Uh, actually, I found it in the barn. But, uh, so it's not uh, not quite as nice as, uh, as some of them, but basically I got the cooler at an auction for like a dollar. And, uh, I got the screen. I think I was uh, something I got the, at an auction also in a box of uh, old scrap lumber. So the whole thing cost me a couple of bucks. And I'm good to go. So, uh, don't have to keep it too terribly clean. I do clean it out real good when I put it away, though. I mean, you're not, you don't have to worry about uh, as long as you don't get a lot of mold or bacteria growing in there. Uh, and anything that goes in here comes out, gets boiled. So as long as it's not dirty. Good. So we're, we're at 165 and uh, we're shooting for 151. 
figure between the, the grain and the, the cooler, it should be pretty close. Okay. Can we put the cooler under the valve? I was just thinking about that. Looks like it'll fit. There you go. Perfect. All right. Actually, I thought I'd head off close. Um, well, it's probably not. <laughs> <laughs> it is actually close. You ready then? Yep. I just dump this in there. Okay. Which I'm going to sugars after beyond that point. Okay. So if you've got more sugar in there it'll it stops you from converting anymore, save some sweetness and maybe a little mouthfeel for you. Okay. Yeah. But after an hour mash, most of the sugar should be most gone anyway. Yeah, there's not Mo a lot left. Most of it should be, but you know, you so never know. <laughs> so maybe if you did a mash out on a on a shorter mash time, then you would end up with some sweetness left. Yeah. 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 I would say uh, you know, uh, you're right, it's probably not a big deal. I think sweetness has more to do with temperature than it does with time. Yeah. Well, we're talking about the, the, the pros and cons of a mash out. How, you know, it can make a difference, but I don't think it makes a, a big difference. I've had recipes that have called for it and I've done it. Um, yeah. I, I, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I change my mind in the middle. Like, yeah, I don't feel like it. Or, ah, uh, the water's hot, I might as well go ahead and do it. <laughs> so. yeah, I think it might have more to do with efficiency, too. With a mash out, which eventually can have uh, an effect on the body and the sweetness of the beer. Mm -hmm. It's super efficient. Well, well, if you do a mash out, you do, then you have a higher starting gravity, therefore you probably have a little bit higher finishing gravity, so it'll be a little bit... Well, plus, it's also, it's right. going to heat the grain bed a little more, too, so you're going to probably be able to get, extract more of the sugars, wash more of the sugars out, you're not going to leave as much... Yeah, that's the efficiency it, part of it. Yeah, right. <laughs> so you end up with a little higher starting gravity. Yeah, I, get a, I start when I get a starter wart, and um, it's usually around, gravity around 30 ish. Uh, what I'll do is when I'm when I'm uh, watering, I'll save off the last bit and a lot of times it's at a, a gravity of like 10. I'll boil it down two thirds so I end up with a gravity of about 30 and then I freeze it. And when I need a starter wort, pull it out of the freezer, let it defrost and then throw the yeast in there and shake the hell out of it. Take, loosen the lid up, you don't want the Probably explode on you. <laughs> and, uh, mm -hmm. 
then uh, wait till the next day. I usually, I'll tighten it up, shake it every few hours, and keep the, I don't have a stir plate like Scott or Steve. I use a stir plate too. I, if I, if I had one, I would use it, but I don't. And I haven't, haven't got around to building one yet. Easy enough. Ready? Siri says it's time to spot. All right, let's see. Well, let's, uh, let's set our grain bed here. Get out of the way. <laughs> You're between me and the camera. <laughs> are we going to be carrying water over there to sparge? Is that mm -hmm. how we do it? Yeah, we'll yeah, just, we'll just use a pitcher. Well, we're gonna, we probably want the pop out of it. Well, she's all right. As long as she's not walking by the fire, getting me in trouble for burning. She'll mm -hmm. move when we drip. Oh, that's it. <laughs> 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 So this is our Vorloff step. Chris is going to draw a little bit of gallon of beer off and then slowly pour it into the top and help set the grain bed, which ultimately turns into a filter so that we get some clear wort that we can boil to, uh, that's already pretty clear. Yeah, I know, that's what I was thinking. I've got a, what do you mean, pretty, pretty, pretty fine mesh at the bottom there. It's a yeah. false bottom. That's what I mean by slowly. <laughs> and Sam, we're discussing the pros and cons of what people think about hot side aeration, and I just think it's not a problem. I don't think it really exists. It's a beer brewing, a home brewer's myth. In my opinion, <laughs> it's just opinion. I, 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 I was reading some older books on brewing, and they do talk about it. And um, but I don't know that it's so, such a myth. But I don't know that it's something that you really have to worry about. I think a healthy ye yeast pitch just is, is just in love with any oxygen that's present at the point. It doesn't really matter where it got induced yeah. in the process. And so unless you get a ridiculously large amount of oxygen. And maybe a real, and maybe a real ridiculous under pitching, right? <laughs> combined, right. that okay. you might get a problem. But, uh, All right, so that, that looks pretty clear to me. So I'm going to go into this my 10 gallon bucket to get it started. You go for it. Yeah, I'm just thinking we should be able to do that. Then we can start transferring that. And once we get near the top of this, we can probably just dump the rest of that in. Okay. Gotta tighten that up on the inside, I think. We're not cold enough there so far. See, now draining that cooler like that, I think is gonna introduce a fair amount of oxygen into our wart. Well, what I usually do, actually, I've got this little hose here. Right. I should probably do it. And I actually will hook this hose up. Which is what made me think of it, and I was like, you know what? I don't think it matters. Like, I just don't. Really, I, I don't I really believe, believe this goes out. out. It's pretty gross, and I really don't want it on my plate. Right. Do it. Normally, I do. I usually use that. I clean that hose out, and I run the beer through it. We can always do those. Put it on top of that. Boost it up a little higher. Fit there. No, something shorter. That'll work, eh? Ooh, yeah, that's nice. It keeps slowing down. Maybe I need to add more. I think we'll get involved here. Time to get some water. A lot different atmosphere here now than in, in the, the last year. couple of months. Yeah, this has been this is a lot better. <laughs> if I were dressed like you, Chris, I would still be cold now. It's summer. Mm -hmm. I got comfy chairs out of the shed. Get the doors open. Get the grill going. 
Loving the summer. Loving the summer. Mm -hmm. Happy Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> I should have brought something yeah, Mexican to put on the grill. Well, we brewed on Friday. We brewed on Friday. We did miss the May the 4th, but that's Cinco de Mayo. How long do you usually sparge for? Well, I think um, ideally you want to shoot for about an hour, but for a little less. How long do you, you, know, you said you, you fly sparge, right? I just started fly sparging, um, and uh, I've been going about 45, 50 minutes. Yeah, that's right in that range. Um, I can only fly sparge if I make a five gallon batch right now. This is my, I use the 10 gallon beverage cooler. But I hope to get uh, false bottom from the heat cooler so I can use these batches too. Yeah. Well, Harry, would Harry order that one in? Yeah, Pete ordered one, right? For the Pete? Yeah. Um,
got a few degrees to go yet, but I don't want to. You want to? I don't want. I don't want to figure out that it's well known when it's my phone. Have you guys ever skim off? Yeah, 
watching these shows. <laughs> but I bet you edit that out. give you bittering also, but the betas give you bittering through the fermentation process. Oh, okay. And uh, and time, but it's and it's not as not as good of a bitter. It's a different kind of bitter. Not as not as pleasant of a flavor, but it's still there. And it's like your noble hops tend to be 50-50. But the S, the essential oil, so it give you the floral. That is okay. Really water so the essential oils come out. Uh, don't need the, the host. Yeah. Essential oils don't need the bubbling then to come out. That's the right. Well, they here, hang on. Let me turn this water on. Keep an eye on that for you. There, if you do a first wort hop, and they're like, so that's not boiling yet either. You're more at uh, your starch factors, right? And um. They say that gives you a milder, so less uh, 
so mild and bitter in charge as opposed to. Uh, okay. Is it coming out? Yep. Okay, it's good. Yeah, the, the, uh, you, don't, you don't want this to drain out? Turn out? Not right now, no. I want to save that water for washing up. Oh, gotcha. But, uh, Good idea. Yeah, the essential oils, um, the heat will drive them off. Yeah, so you put them in as you're cooling or even after you, after you cool, they dry up and get a lot of them. But if you put them in, what well, Scott was talking about, the first wort, that's when and you're pulling your wart off before you start boiling. If you no. put them in then, the oils. Something does, I forget exactly. Yeah, apparently the word is, they, 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 they blend in. Emulsify. And you don't, emulsify. Get, you, you don't lose them, them though, they before they lock. They don't boil off. Okay. If you don't um, lose them, they, uh, so you figure your bitterness, like the you still get the bitterness. No, you don't. You figure the first four hops like a 20 minute addition as opposed to like a 60 minute addition, even though they've been in there for even longer than 60 minutes. Okay. Because they were first war, right? Right. But you still get bitterness from you them. You get bitterness from them, but like Beersmith would want to calculate that as a 20 minute addition as opposed to like a 60. So you get less. Okay. Minutes. Okay. And other, for other people, just describe it as a more mellow, smoother bitterness. Um, so, okay, that's interesting. And they talk about it as more or less. They talk about just the melon and smoother. But you can also get some of the the floral flavors. You know, you get your your pines and your grapefruits coming through. You wouldn't lose those. So you can draw it off. Should I get a whirlpool or anything, or I have to stage your game? I don't. Uh, I might uh, sometimes. You know, throw the my stir stick in at the end of the boil, so I can keep stirring it throughout the the chill. Mm -hmm. um, okay. But not we're pulling like with a pump. You mean? I no, or just uh, you can just I can stir it out after I cool. I'll take and I'll stir it and then let it sit for 20 or 30 minutes. I mean, I just get it spinning in there as much as I can, and okay. it kind of like. Pushes so, everything to the bottom. Yeah, we all the middle. Scrub in or maybe the middle kind of makes a cone in the middle. Hmm. And then you can siphon off the edge of it and leave a lot of it for the very. Oh, okay. Kind of really kind of, I haven't done that. It adds like a half hour to your time, you know, kind of. Does it? Doesn't. It's, Usually by that time, I'm going to really get done. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you got eyes? Can you, can you read a high grower? High grower? I'll see what I can see. It's a little dim in here, but. I can shine a light on it if that helps. <laughs> but I have to read it, I have to go in the house and get my glasses. <laughs> you can see what line it was at. But it looks like. To make sure I'm reading the right yeah, scale. Like which scale are you on? Think that it's right about 1040. Pretty close to 1040. I'm going to spin and check it again. Can you make session there? Yeah, well, that's what it's supposed to be. Right. And you're done. 40. I'm used to 60. <laughs> no, I say I make some, I make some of both. I'm going to say 1038. 1038? Yeah. With the rest, we said 1037. So. Well, I think we right probably did, had a little better. The, the brew efficiency on that, I think it was set at like 60 something, and I, I don't usually, I'm usually better than 60 something. <laughs> Upside down, all the water will come out. I guess I didn't. Did you didn't fall on your last day. Hop seas there, not too bad though. Yeast, it's a. Mm -hmm. Can't pack out after that. Sapal Labs, USO5. It's one of my favorite yeasts, actually. Like well, it's, like, it's, it's basically a 1056. I mean, it's, it's a nice. It, it's, it's a good. It's a good yeast. I mean, it, it's it's reliable. It's clean. It's clean. Yeah, it makes good beer. It makes good beer. I, yeah, it's not a. It's just a good all-around. Yeah, you should always have an extra pack in your refrigerator in case something goes wrong or whatever. Sure. Backup. It's. Uh, Perfect yeast to use to 
finish off a beer that gets stuck maybe. And I did that too, yeah, which right. I did. <laughs> Just that, uh, the barley wine with the, with the uh, Windsor, it definitely got stuck. In the it's a clean fermenter. It does a nice it, job. It, 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 I put a lot of yeast cake in there. Threw a yeast cake in there and it, it took off again. So hopefully it got it down at least down into the 30s. <laughs> All right, if we can pick this up and put it there. All right, now. Actually, yeah, I've made it. All right. Do you want to whirlpool this? Or do we... I think stirring it, that just to evenly distribute the yeast might not be a bad idea. But uh, I wouldn't worry about whirlpooling it to like separate out the trombone or whatever. Well, I don't think you need to serve it too. Okay. I'm not going to stick anything in there. That's the drawback. Is too yeah, I'm, I'm not going to stick anything in there. We're not going to whirlpool it. Let's give it a couple minutes to kind of settle what, out. Why risk contamination, yeah. right? Yeah. I don't know. Well, I think you're a hair over 10. We want to aerate this, so we're just going to leave this splash like hell. Oh, that didn't miss it all. Oh, no. <laughs> well, there is a backup plan. I don't like it near as much, but there is a backup plan. Yeah. Yeah. Old trailer park yeah. style, yeah. right? Whatever, you know. Probably, you know, so it gives you an idea of what he's like, too. Yeah. Not a home event. No, your kids are all good kids. How many? Do you want to get your bucket down here? Three. My youngest one is uh, nine. Oh, wow. So. She's got a ways to go. She's still like, you don't keep star sand like a spray bottle or anything, right? She does. Look at that. You can't be talking. <laughs> it's probably the only thing that <laughs> I did that you do. <laughs> you know, I usually use vodka in my earlocks. I just That's use fun. a star. I just use this star sand here. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably what I should have done. Because <laughs> I can't spray it in there. Now well, that stuff there is probably cleaner. <laughs> Hope we're still recording. I probably should stop using vodka because it's probably a good shot in each. And I did it again. <laughs> I guess if you're buying Grey Goose and using it, you might want to rethink that. But if you pour Mr. Boston in there, what's the big deal? Mr. Boston might be cheaper than Star Sand. It might be. <laughs> it certainly tastes better. Yeah, but not much. I have a taste of Star Sand, but yeah, oh, so you, you followed my plan and I didn't, huh? Yeah, if you pick that up, it's going to suck the Star Sand in a bit. You think? Yeah, I crack the lid a little bit before you carry it. It won't suck it in. It does every time I pick up my bucket. Get an S on your lock? Mm-hmm. I don't seem to have that trouble, but I do like to orient it so that the handle doesn't... I didn't do... I actually had it wrong. I, I, I kind of worked the handle over the top of the airlock, which I've never done before. I got mine right where I don't want it. Good, so did I. 100%. Well, 80%. Because the new it was over here. <laughs> Tipped it over. All righty. Um, I think I'm going to put a little cover on this. Put one already. No, and I, you ever, I like the cold crash because I can sometimes. Actually, I've done it more often than not since I stopped. Oh, yeah, you get too cold too fast, it'll do that too, right? Well, with the other type, just because it's not even about how fast it happens, but because it's cooling down, it's shrinking. And it'll suck air in. Mm -hmm. And if you use the three-piece airlocks, it'll suck whatever's in that airlock in. Yeah, exactly. But the S ones, they just bubble through. Mm -hmm. and it's fine. As long as you don't have too much in there. Right. That's the thing. I think sometimes they're They do have min and max lines on yeah. them. So. Yeah. You can go something like this. You know. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks Marshall. for coming over and brewing with us, Sean. We appreciate it. Thank well, you for having me. I had a great yeah. time. Yeah, we'll, we'll let you know when it's ready, and if you're available, you can give it a taste with us. Yeah, we if, not, we'll drink it. if not, we'll drink it without you. Yeah. <laughs> we'll judging, so uh, we'll probably sit down and do a judging for a lot of 
score sheet. Yeah. Uh, you're welcome to join us. And I really like that. Can't wait. Yeah. Cheers. 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 At, here at Dr. Colbrew, we offer a wide selection. Uh, our malt extracts are Brees liquid, Muntins liquids, Brees dry malt extracts, Brewer's Best beer ingredient kits. And we carry a full line of grains from uh, Avangard, German malt, Dingemans, Muntins, Brees, a full line of specialty grains, special B, flake rice, white wheat, you name it, we've got it. And we will crush it for you, no charge. Why don't we start over there with Matt and work our way around this direction. All right. Speak up loud, Matt, because you're tough to hear you on, on the camera, and it's way the hell over there. <laughs> All right, uh, I would judge the aroma at a nine out of 12. Uh, I did notice the citrus and the slight floral aroma. Appearance was pretty good, slightly cloudy, I gave it a two. Uh, flavor, I got slight maltiness and a noticeable hot presence, gave it 15 out of 20. Mouthfeel, the carbonation was very good and uh, pleasing mouthfeel, three out of five. Overall impression, seven. I said it was a little thin, it could use maybe a stronger hop flavor. Uh, total was 36. Man, he critiqued a lot more than I did. That's all right. <laughs> all right, all right. Cara, what do you got? Aroma, 8 out of 12. Um, no real comments on that one. Appearance, uh, 3 out of 3. I thought the color and clarity were very nice. Uh, the flavor, 15 out of 20. I thought it was a nice balance of the malt and the hops, and it was a very nice finish. Uh, mouthfeel, 3 of 5. It could have had a little more mouthfeel. Uh, and overall impression was 7 out of 10. I thought it was smooth and easy drinking. So a total of 36 out of 50. Okay, and Scott? Apparently I can't add. Go <laughs> <laughs> help me. You want me to, want me to go while you re redo your math? No. For aroma, I gave it a 9 out of 12. It's, I mean, it smells like beer. It doesn't really have a really strong aroma. There's um, you smell a little bit of maltiness and a little bit of hops, but it's like, it smells fine. Um, nothing overpowering, but then for uh, appearance, I gave it a 3 out of 3 because mine looked good. It's not really cloudy. I mean, it's fine. It has head retention, a little lacing, and um, I think that category in general should have more points. Three is not enough because the back of you know, make it two out of three is like a 33% hitter. I guess one point, but whatever. I gave it a three out of three. Then, what are we at? Uh, flavor, I gave it a 15 out of 20. And it has a little bit of an off flavor in it, actually, that I would rather not be there. I can't really identify what it is, but uh, there's something about it that I, I think could be better. Uh, the hops are good and the maltiness I like, but there is something else going on there at the same time, too. So, an overall impression, I gave it a 7 out of 10. I think it's a pretty good feel? drinkable beer. Oh, uh, mouthfeel. Mouthfeel, I gave it a 4 out of 5. Um, it's, I don't know, it's about like a lot, most beer I drink. It's, um, it's not too thin, it's not too thick either. I think it's, uh, it's pretty good. I don't like it. So I, but I ended up with 38. <laughs> a lot of our scores are the same. You guys, yeah, you can't possibly be so at 38. I should well, be, 30, maybe, 38 I, might be right. maybe I should be at 37, but whatever. I added up a couple times. And I, I think guess, that's too generous. I really think it's really about a 33. I, and, I, and, I, so. and, I, and I definitely get <laughs> higher marks than it probably should have been. I'm the highest on everybody. But I'm generally, you know, no mind. Uh, aroma, I, I gave it a 10 out of 12. Uh, it's got a, a malty aroma. I definitely smell the malt in there. Definitely a little bit of hops going on. Uh, no off-putting esters, so I think it smells pretty good. Appearance, 3 out of 3. I was looking at Scott's beer when I did that. And that that's clear, good head retention. Um, that's actually a little bit you know, low to medium, I would say, on the head retention, but it's acceptable. Right, yeah. And the color is correct for the, for the style. Being a, a pale ale. Uh, flavor, I gave it a 15 out of 20. Uh, it's got a nice malty backbone, uh, good hops for the style, and uh, it's got a, it does have a slight bitter aftertaste. I mean, that's uh, maybe if we lower the 
the 60 minute hops a little bit. It might not have been quite so bitter on the back side, but um, not uncommon for a pale ale to have that little bit of a bitter bite to it. Uh, mouthfeel, you have a four out of five. I think it's got a it's got a good mouthfeel for you know the attenuation and the, and the alcohol content. Um, it's a small beer, and uh, it did attenuate out. We actually ended up with a lot higher alcohol. We were supposed, we were supposed to end up with lower alcohol with more residuals in there. Um, but for you know, a beer that's supposed to be three and a half percent, I think it's got plenty of mouthfeel. <laughs> and uh, the overall impression, I gave it an eight out of ten. I think it's a good session beer. And um, yeah, I've definitely drank three cakes of this already, so I've, I've been sessioning it a lot lately. <laughs> uh, so it comes out to, to 40 out of 50, and uh, yeah, and that number's probably high, but, uh, but I can live with that. All right. I like it. I would drink more of it. Oh, there's another bottle over there. <laughs> <laughs>